I transmigrated into the male lead of a tragic romance novel. After painstakingly finishing the storyline, on my way home, I accidentally overheard my daughter saying, Mom, we finally don't have to pretend with Dad anymore. To my surprise, Willow also smiled gently and said, Shall I find you a new dad? My daughter nodded vigorously. Hearing this, I was overjoyed. I immediately pushed the door open and said, I agree to the divorce. Why wait any longer? The Civil Affairs Bureau will close soon. Chapter 1 I was standing outside the children's room, holding a cake in my hand. The door was ajar, and I could hear bits of the conversation inside. Mom, will I never get sick again? My daughter Anna's voice echoed. Yes. Willow's voice softened, a tone she only used with Anna. The storyline is over. There will be no more deviations. So you won't be punished with sickness anymore. And what about Uncle Makoto? Anna asked eagerly. It's all dad's fault. Uncle Makoto could only sneak around because of him. If there were no dad, we wouldn't have to do things we don't like. Mom could openly be with Uncle Makoto. Mom, now that the storyline is over, can you divorce dad? My hand, holding the cake box, started to ache from the pressure. In the gift bag, I had the limited edition Barbie doll I had searched for a month to find. There was a moment of silence inside the children's room. It seemed like Willow hesitated for a while before gently saying, Yes, I'll divorce your father. Today is your birthday. I'll tell him in a few days. Chapter 2 Anna's excited cheers seeped through the crack in the door, chilling me to the bone. Eight years ago, I had agreed to the system's request to save my wife and son from a car accident. I was thrust into this tragic storyline. I had to strictly follow the plot until the end. If there were any deviations, the system would punish me. At best. I would get sick. At worst, I would face fatal accidents and be forcibly removed from this world. But when the storyline flowed smoothly, I would be rewarded with points that could help wake up my wife and son. I wasn't the best host. I met Willow when I was 19, stumbling through life. By 22, we were married, and Anna was born. Just when I thought we were nearing the end of the storyline, Willow became increasingly hostile, constantly picking fights with me. I started getting sick more often. Sometimes it was so severe that I couldn't see or hear clearly. Anna is my daughter. She was also affected by the system's punishments, feeling one-tenth of my pain. Anna cried day and night, her tiny body growing weaker and weaker. At the risk of failure, I told Willow about the system. If she deviated from the storyline again, I would die. And so would Anna. We could only be freed once the storyline ended. At that time, there were only five years left. Willow stopped throwing tantrums over trivial matters. But when we occasionally argued, Anna and I would get sick. I felt ashamed toward my daughter. But Anna always ate her meals and took her medicine diligently. Gradually, we grew closer. Finally, a few days ago, the system told me the storyline was complete. I shared the news with Willow. From now on, we wouldn't be controlled by the system. We could live freely. I had the choice to leave this world or stay. Out of selfishness, I didn't want to leave Anna alone. I planned to stay with her until she was an adult. But reality struck me hard. Chapter 3 I turned around and threw the cake and toys into the trash. Then, I pushed open the door and said, I agree to the divorce. I looked at Anna and said, Anna, now I realize that you've always wanted to trade me for a new dad. It must have been hard for you and your mom to stay with me. A flush of embarrassed anger appeared on Anna's little face as her lie was exposed. She still couldn't lie, nor could she hide her thoughts. She just stuck her neck out and accused me. Daddy was eavesdropping. Bad daddy, I don't like you because you're bad. Even though I was mentally prepared. Hearing my daughter, whom I once held as my precious gem, Say how much she hated me with her own lips. The emotions inside me surged uncontrollably. Willow looked surprised. But she didn't stop Anna. She took a moment to compose herself and finally just nodded. Saying. Alright. Sorry for deceiving you with Anna for so long. Let's divorce then. I can't wait to marry Makoto. Anna snorted and said loudly. Me too. Uncle Makoto is so nice. But daddy chased him away for no reason. I don't want this kind of daddy. I felt utterly defeated. A few years ago. Makoto tried several times to harm Anna. Even if the plot didn't demand Makoto to leave, for Anna's sake, I would have found a way to make him go. I thought I had succeeded, but now, it seems, I was the one being deceived. Warning. Plot deviation detected at the ending. Major character misalignment. The system's alarm and a piercing buzzing noise exploded in my head. Host, please repair the plot within seven days, or the plot will be forcibly terminated. My head throbbed with pain as I struggled to question the system internally. System, what is happening? I urgently called out to the system. Sorry, host. It seems we've both been deceived. The plot monitoring is conducted from the host's perspective. And this is the first time a character has deceived the system. I overlooked this. The mechanical voice of the system echoed slowly. However, since the system also failed to detect the character's anomaly, 
I will take partial responsibility. Even if the plot is not repaired within seven days, you will still receive your points. I felt a slight relief in my heart. When I came back to my senses, Willow and Anna were nervously staring at me. They knew that every time I zoned out, it meant I was communicating with the system. The system again. What's going on? Isn't the plot over? Willow's tone was laced with unease. It won't punish Anna and Makoto, will it? Anna also covered her mouth, her big eyes darting around. I, I take back what I just said. I waited for a moment, seeing that neither mother nor daughter seemed worried about me. I suddenly smiled. No, it won't, I said with a bitter smile. And Anna, happy birthday. Your birthday gift is your freedom. I gave up on fixing the plot. I would just wait for the seven days to pass and be forcibly removed when the plot repair failed. Chapter 4 Willow really couldn't wait for even a second. She couldn't care less about the 30-day divorce cooling off period and chose to file for divorce through the courts. When she got the divorce certificate and was about to leave, I couldn't help but ask Anna. Anna, if you never see your father again, will you be sad? Anna was pouring tea for her doll while playing house and said without looking up, Daddy, are you starting again? You drove away Uncle Makoto with that line. Forcing mom to stay with you, are you trying to force me now? I froze. I did say that if the plot deviates too much, I would die, but I never said that the world would disappear if the plot became too irrational. Therefore, the host and the character should have a mutually supportive relationship for survival, but I feared that Willow and Anna would be scared if they knew, so I kept it a secret. I slowly said, Anna, I won't say it again, but daddy really is going to leave this world. You're so annoying. Anna suddenly grabbed the tea set and threw it at me, her little face full of impatience. Disappear, disappear, then just go away. The teacup hit the corner of my eye, and an overwhelming mix of emotions, sweet, bitter, sour, flooded over me. I suddenly felt lightheaded and unsteady. My senses blurred for a moment. The plot had shifted again. I took a deep breath and tried to reach out to touch Anna's hair. Anna dodged and moved to another spot to continue playing with her dolls. I sighed. All right. You have Uncle Makoto to keep you company. Anyway, I stepped outside and stood by the road waiting for a ride. A sports car roared toward me and suddenly stopped right next to me. The window rolled down, revealing a handsome, arrogant face. It was Makoto, Willow's unforgettable first love. Originally, I, as the stand-in male lead, was supposed to erase his influence so Willow would fall in love with the real me. But clearly, I failed. Instead, they had teamed up to deceive me. George, long time no see. Makoto's smile was boastful as he inexplicably pulled out a ring box, opened it to show me a heart-shaped pink diamond, and said, unlike you. I'm not so stingy that I can't even buy a diamond ring for Willow. We picked this pink diamond together. Willow and I are getting married the day after tomorrow. You must come. Looking at that diamond, I couldn't help but laugh. When I married Willow, the plot required me to buy her a heart-shaped pink diamond. But Willow said that no matter how brilliant a diamond looks, it's actually just an illusion. Flashy and worthless. I wanted to discuss it with her, not wanting to leave any regrets for the wedding. But she shook her head, pouted as if angry and said that a tacky thing like a diamond wasn't worthy of her. She didn't want to wear one if I had to buy something. Just buy a simple gold ring. I thought it was a small matter. So I went against the plot. The next day, I was punished by the plot. I fell down the stairs and spent three months recovering. At the time, I was puzzled. How could a small plot deviation like a difference in adjectives cause such a severe punishment? Now I see the pink diamond was indeed important to the plot. It wasn't that the diamond was unworthy of Willow. It was that I wasn't worthy of buying a pink diamond for Willow. Congratulations, I said flatly. A white light suddenly flashed before my eyes. That uncontrollable feeling of weightlessness hit me again. At this rate, I wouldn't need seven days to be forcibly ejected from this world. I heard from Willow that you're bringing up the old story again, saying you're going to disappear. Makoto sneered, but the plot is over. Isn't it a bit far-fetched to keep saying that? I ignored Makoto. Anyway, the plot deviation was now irreversible. This world was about to collapse. Chapter 5, The Sixth to Last Day. I didn't rent an apartment anymore. Instead, I found a luxury hotel, intending to just lie down and wait for the plot to crumble. The plot monitoring is conducted from the host's perspective. The system's prompt suddenly sounded. I glanced at the TV showing the news of Willow's upcoming wedding and hummed in acknowledgement. I turned off the TV and opened my phone to see their sweet smiles all over the gossip channels. How much love must they have, to want the whole world to witness their affection? The system continued. Since the monitoring is from the host's perspective, the host must personally witness Willow and Makoto's wedding for the system to assess the deviation from the plot. I blinked and sat up straight. No wonder I hadn't felt the weightlessness today. System, don't you think you have a bug? I asked helplessly. The system was silent for a moment. This system will apply for an upgrade. But if it weren't for this bug, given the host's abilities, 
It wouldn't have been possible to reach the plot's conclusion. I was choked by the system's words. You, host, please quickly witness the plot. The system's mechanical voice had a trace of reluctance. Soon, you'll be able to leave this world. Day 5. I wore a simple white shirt to attend Willow's wedding. The wedding was set on a white sandy beach. The weather was clear, with a gentle breeze. The venue was decorated like a sea of flowers, with even the walkway covered in pink petals. The system, afraid I might be troubled, suggested I wear a mask and sunglasses for disguise. I smiled and declined. I found a seat near the front on my own, waiting for the ceremony to begin. From this angle, I should be able to clearly see Willow and Makoto's expressions. Host, actually you, the system was unusually talkative today. I shook my head. Don't worry about me. Actually, they don't care about me, and that's a relief. It's definitely sad, but I'm more excited about the life that awaits me when I return. With that thought, I picked up a napkin from the table, folded it a few times, and turned it into a little bear, showing it to the system. Look, every time my son throws a tantrum, I fold a little bear like this to cheer him up. Luckily, I haven't forgotten this skill. I held up the little bear, inspecting it, behind me. A familiar soft voice suddenly spoke. Daddy, why are you here? I turned around and saw Anna dressed in an adorable flower girl dress. She was holding a flower basket. Inside the basket was a pink ring box. Instinctively, I reached out to hug her, but I pulled my hand back before touching her. Anna's expression was guarded. She clutched the flower basket and bluntly said, You're not here to break up mommy and chase away Uncle Makoto again, are you? People around us all turned to look at me. I smiled. Anna, you're mistaken. It was your Uncle Makoto who invited me to the wedding. Anna froze for a moment. She seemed surprised by my response, fidgeting with the hem of her dress. Then she saw the little bear in my hand and said, Daddy, what's that? She reached out to grab it. I gently pushed her away. Anna, this isn't your toy. You can't just take it. Anna's eyes widened. She put the flower basket down and stubbornly grabbed my hand. Daddy, I want to play with it. The next second, a voice called out from behind. I turned and saw Willow in a pure white wedding dress, standing behind me at some point. She sneered. George. Using little tricks to win Anna over won't work. Chapter 6. I looked at her coldly and said. You're overthinking this. This is something I made for my son. Willow froze for a moment. Then her usual cold expression returned. She said. George, have you gone mad? First, you disappear. And now you've made up a son. What's next? Are you going to tell me you have another wife? Two. If I insist on marrying Makoto, will you vanish and go live with your imaginary wife and son? Willow seemed to find this an absurd joke. George, you're disgusting. It was bad enough you lied to me, but now you're lying to a child too. Don't worry, you won't go anywhere for the rest of your life. You'll get to watch me, Makoto, and Anna live happily together. I didn't respond and sat back in my chair. She grabbed Anna's hand, picked up the flower basket, gave me one last look, and quickly left. The murmurs around me grew louder. I kept my focus inward, waiting for the ceremony to begin. Makoto entered, dressed in a sharp suit, when he saw me. A smirk tugged at the corner of his lips before he turned to gaze tenderly at Willow. To the sound of romantic, soft music, Makoto knelt down, proposed, and kissed his bride. The warning alarms in my head were so loud, they felt like they were going to explode. As the weightlessness hit, even breathing became difficult. My internal organs began to shut down and shrink at a rapid pace. I struggled to stay conscious and kept watching. Anna, holding her flower basket, skipped onto the stage. She called out joyfully, Daddy Makoto. Before rushing into his arms, Willow lightly scolded Anna for her lack of manners. Makoto responded lovingly, hugging her and calling her his daughter. Warning, warning. The storyline is nearing collapse. Host, please fix it immediately. If not, the host will be forcibly removed from this world. I ignored the system's buzzing. Instead, I leaned against the table, resting my head, and carefully observed Willow's expression. Willow had always been a reserved person, even during the height of our romance. She never looked as happy and expectant as she did now. I couldn't understand it, but emotions are the most incomprehensible thing. That's why the system needs real people to experience the storyline. Host, the plot deviation is nearing the limit. The system's voice came just in time. The deviation is worse than the system predicted. If there's another stimulus, you could be removed at any moment. I barely made a sound of acknowledgement. Host, what I mean is, if you have anything to say or do, you won't have time if you wait any longer. I looked at the smiles on Willow and Anna's faces. I slowly let go of my attachment. There's nothing I need to say or do. When it's time to leave, just take me away. The ceremony had reached its emotional climax. Makoto took the ring box from the flower basket, opened it. It was empty. The next second, his eyes locked onto me, and he stopped the music. He said, the ring is gone. Everyone turned to look at me. 
Their suspicious gazes drilled holes into my body. Anna was the first to react. Her childish voice rang out. Just now, I was holding the flower basket and went to find daddy. Willow, biting her lip, holding her skirt in frustration, said angrily, George, you took it, didn't you? Give back the ring. Makoto, however, shook his head, pretending to be conflicted, and said, George must be joking with us. In reality, I didn't even have the strength to stand up or refute them anymore. My indifference completely enraged Willow. Chapter 7. I knew it. You're lying to me again. Willow walked up to my side, grabbing my arm and said, Attending the wedding was just a cover. The truth is, you want to ruin my wedding with Makoto. George, you're really disgusting. I used all my strength. But I could only manage a faint smile. Anna ran over too, kicking and punching me with her little arms and legs. It didn't hurt. But my clothes became stained with dirt. Bad daddy, you're ruining everything again. Daddy only hurts others. You only spoil the fun. I don't want you. Daddy, just disappear. After Anna's shrill screams, the world suddenly came to a halt. The pain, the sense of weightlessness, and even my sadness, all vanished. The entire space was frozen. Everyone's movements were suspended. Warning. The plot has collapsed. Host George will be ejected from this world in five seconds. The monotonous mechanical voice echoed. I quietly watched as my soul began to detach from my body. 5. Willow was holding onto me tightly. Her nails were deeply embedded in my flesh. If time hadn't frozen, I thought, I would be in a lot of pain. 4. Anna, like an angry little kitten, had her cheeks flushed red, baring her teeth. 3. Makoto raised an eyebrow slightly. He stood on the platform, leaning down to enjoy the show. A faint pink reflection from a gem peeked out of his suit pocket. I understood. He had hidden the pink diamond on him all along. 2. I idly looked around. Most people looked at me with contempt, disdain. Half a lifetime lived. A wife who didn't love me. A daughter who didn't care. A complete failure. I sighed. But I really had tried my best. 1. I closed my eyes. Opened them. Closed them again. And opened once more. System. I asked through gritted teeth. What's going on? It seems I've been trapped here as a soul. Chapter 8. Host. Wait. There's another bug. The system's voice rang in my head. The plot is collapsing too quickly. Four days earlier than expected. The exit passage isn't ready yet. I grumbled. Don't tell me I have to go back to that body again. You won't. For once. The system sounded reliable. You'll only remain as a soul. And at most. Stay for one more day. This system has specially unlocked your movement privileges. During this time. You can move freely. I was speechless. Thanks. System. You're welcome. Host. The system's voice grew fainter. Remember to give me a good rating. The next moment. I blinked. I was already floating in midair. Everything that had been frozen started to come back to life. The environment became noisy. Willow's impatience. Anna's screams. And Makoto's smugness all burst into vivid motion. Willow looked at me coldly and said. Speak. But with no soul left in my body. It instantly slumped against the back of the chair. She pinched my arm hard. Clearly trying to wake me up from what she thought was a fake fainting spell. She said. Stop pretending. George. What exactly do you want? I beg you. Stop tormenting me and Anna. Anna stopped kicking. She didn't understand the schemes of adults. She just sensed something was off in my unusual calmness. Seeing no reaction from me. Anna stupidly poked my leg with her finger. This was actually a secret between Anna and me. Every time I half-heartedly played house with her and pretended it was time to sleep. She would poke my leg. As soon as she poked me. I wouldn't be able to keep pretending. But this time. No matter how much she poked. I felt nothing. And my eyes remained shut. No. No. Anna was starting to get scared. She tugged at Willow's skirt and said. Mom. Dad. He. Enough. I'm so sick of this. Willow suddenly screamed hysterically. It's all because I've been too stupid. Too easy to fool. That he always lies to me. Always tricks me. George. You love to fake things. Fine. Keep faking. I don't care at all. Willow pushed me hard. She thought I was just pretending to faint. She believed that. Driven by the body's subconscious need for self-preservation. I would automatically protect myself before hitting the ground. Then she would be able to expose me. But I was already dead. My body. Defenseless. Crashed to the ground with a loud thud. My head bounced up half an inch after hitting the floor. Then hit the ground again. It was utterly pathetic. Even I felt a little sorry for myself. The way I left wasn't exactly dignified. People around me started screaming. Someone shouted to call 120 for an ambulance. Someone else to call the police. Others were already pulling out their phones, eagerly filming the scene. Willow's face remained determined, even when Anna threw herself on my body, screaming Daddy in terror. Willow kept that same expression, even when Makoto rushed down and checked my breathing. Willow's face didn't change, even as people shouted. 
He's dead. And does anyone know CPR? Willow didn't even lower her eyes to look at me. It wasn't until 120 arrived and took me in the now unconscious, crying Anna away. Willow still stood there. The doctor asked if there were any family members to ride with us. When no one responded, they had no choice but to leave. For a moment, I hesitated, not knowing whether to follow the ambulance or stay here. Willow just stood there, cold as ice, oblivious to everything changing around her, as if in a dream. No one went over to wake her up. Not even Makoto dared approach her. The crowd gradually dispersed. It was only then that Willow seemed to come back to life. I floated in front of her, curiously watching her. Those familiar features, just as delicate and beautiful as they were eight years ago. Only now, there was a layer of sorrow in her eyes. Chapter 9. What was Willow troubled by? It must have been our marriage, clearly. I was just her stand-in, but in the end, I became her husband. At first, I went to great lengths to orchestrate chance encounters, to be romantic, foolishly pouring out my heart. She would always give me a faint smile as if she could see through all my plans. Even so, she still agreed to go on dates with me, playing out each part of the storyline again and again. At some point, I even thought I had melted her icy exterior, but when Makoto appeared, Willow began to drift further away from me, especially after I revealed the existence of the storyline system. A wall went up between us overnight. I desperately tried to tear it down, but Willow kept rebuilding it. Even Anna questioned my feelings. This outcome must be what both mother and daughter wanted. Anna is still young only afraid of losing someone. If Makoto buys her more toys, she'll be fine, but why isn't Willow happy? I leaned closer to Willow's face, her eyelashes hung low, with droplets of water clinging to them, her thin lips trembled, as if she wanted to laugh, but maybe she wanted to cry. After a long pause, she whispered, George, this time, it's real. No, it can't be, you're still lying to me. Suddenly, she raised her head, grabbed the car keys, and rushed outside. By the time we reached the hospital, the doctor had just confirmed my brain death. There was no need for resuscitation. Anna had already woken up. She sobbed and hiccuped, repeatedly saying that she didn't want daddy to go, didn't want daddy to disappear. The nurses tried to comfort her, but when they heard she had been kicking and wishing I'd disappear when I died, their expressions turned strange. In the end, no one went to comfort her, mommy. When Anna saw Willow, it was like she had seen her savior. She ran to her, crying, they're not saving daddy they said daddy is dead. Mommy, it must be because we weren't good, that's why daddy died. Willow's eyes turned red, and she muttered in disbelief. What? Ignoring the staff, Willow rushed into the emergency room. I lay there, lifeless, on the cold operating table. The doctor shook his head and said, I'm sorry for your loss. Willow, unwilling to accept it, grabbed the doctor's wrist. Impossible. He has a system. How could he die so easily? The doctor looked Willow up and down, then asked patiently, what system? Willow, dazed, replied, the system, unless I stop loving him, he can't die. The doctor's eyes immediately took on a strange look. He silently stepped back a few paces and said, do you love him? Willow lowered her face. I, the doctor seized the opportunity, yanking his hand free and backing away even further. Are you his family? He's been confirmed dead. You should prepare for the cremation. Willow stared at the doctor in disbelief. No, you don't understand what I'm saying. The system, do you understand? Unless, the doctor. Reaching the end of his patience, had heard enough. During the resuscitation, the doctor and nurses had already pieced together what had happened. Seeing Willow's current state, the doctor felt frustrated. First, madam, I don't know what this system is that you're talking about. Second, as far as I know, the deceased's time of death was during your wedding with someone else. With that, the doctor hurriedly left the room. Willow looked at me, lost. She let out a sarcastic laugh. George, I admit it. You scared me. Fine. You win. I won't marry Makoto. Is that enough? Can you wake up now? She walked over to me, poking my face. System, I know you can hear me. Bring George back. Anna can't live without her dad. But, unfortunately, no one responded. Willow continued muttering to herself for a long time. She seemed deeply engrossed in her role, unable to believe that I had truly died. Chapter 10. I floated out aimlessly. Anna curled up in the chair, hugging her legs, sobbing uncontrollably. Makoto had already changed his clothes and hurried over. He sat beside Anna, gently reaching out to hold her. Uncle Makoto, Anna looked up, bursting into tears as she threw herself into his arms. Daddy is dead. What am I supposed to do? Makoto's expression was hard to read. He patted Anna's back, speaking softly. Don't be afraid. Uncle will be here with you. Anna raised her tear-streaked face. Uncle Makoto, I just thought about it. Daddy didn't even touch the flower basket. 
It was you who told me to take the flower basket to daddy. The ring was lost. It wasn't daddy's fault. Makoto's body stiffened abruptly. He looked away and said. Hmm. Uncle also believes your daddy is innocent. Anna. However. Wouldn't let it go. But daddy is dead. Because of mommy and me. I looked at Anna. Feeling deeply moved. She was more emotional and perceptive than Willow. But being so young. She was easy to deceive. Anna. What are you saying? Makoto forced a smile. Your daddy died from a sudden heart attack. No. Anna stubbornly stared at Makoto. Daddy was killed by me. Mommy. And you. Uncle Makoto. Makoto's expression cracked. He could feel people around him watching. Whispering. Anna. Makoto raised his voice. Hoping to suppress her. Your daddy insisted on coming to the wedding. He couldn't handle the shock and died. How could that be my fault? Anna had never responded well to pressure. She forcefully pushed Makoto away. Jumped to the ground. And shrieked. Uncle Makoto told me to make daddy angry. That's why daddy died. Uncle Makoto. And mommy. And I. We all knew. If we left daddy. He would die. The child's voice carried naturally. The bystanders. Hiding in corners. Leaning on chairs. Pretending to look at their phones. All turned their shocked gazes towards Makoto. Makoto reached out. Trying to cover Anna's mouth. But it was too late. Anna cried out loudly. We killed daddy. Daddy is dead. Makoto cursed silently in his heart. He had warned Willow not to tell Anna about the system. A child with such unpredictable moods could never help them deceive the system. But Willow insisted. Saying Anna was mature enough to understand. Plus, people are more likely to believe a child's words. That's why Makoto agreed. Later, he was even relieved that Anna knew about the system. After all, Anna's betrayal was the deepest wound for George. What could be more suffocating than a betrayal from your most beloved daughter? Makoto found it all amusing. But he hadn't expected George to die so quickly. And even worse, die at his wedding. Though, in a way, it was a blessing in disguise. Upon further thought, Makoto realized he no longer had to worry about George or the system. As long as he managed his relationship with Anna carefully. The future was bound to be bright. Anna, keep your voice down. Makoto softened his tone, speaking quietly. You know, no one will believe that there's a system in this world. Anna's sobbing stopped abruptly. Her eyes were filled with a strange, hopeless emotion. She looked like a wounded kitten that had been abandoned. I floated next to her, wanting to touch her, but my hand passed right through her. My dear Anna, even as a soul, I still felt a pang of sorrow. Chapter 11 Later that evening, Willow took Anna home. Makoto accompanied them. The driver quietly drove the car. Anna, exhausted from crying, lay asleep in Willow's arms. Makoto had been wanting to say something. But Willow, her face cold as ice, bit her lip and remained silent. When they got out of the car and arrived home, the nanny took Anna upstairs. On the first floor, only Willow and Makoto remained. Makoto was the first to speak. Willow, I didn't expect things to turn out this way. The plot was supposed to be over. So why did this happen? Willow lowered her gaze without speaking. Quietly looking at her fingers, Makoto said with concern. Willow, this has hit Anna too hard. She still believes that we caused George's. But wasn't the plot over? Maybe this was just an unfortunate coincidence. Willow closed her eyes and said softly. Before the divorce, George was momentarily absent-minded. Anna and I both suspected that the system had reappeared. But we didn't pay attention. We still decided to confront George. Makoto paused. But Anna is okay. Right. If it were a system punishment, Anna would have been hurt too. Willow covered her eyes with her hands in pain. I don't know. Why? I just didn't want to be controlled by the system anymore. I wanted to make a decision freely for once. I only did it this one time. And he died. Seeing this, Makoto slowly moved closer to Willow. Trying to hug her, he said. Don't blame yourself too much. Maybe it really was just a coincidence. Willow took two steps back. Smiled bitterly. And let the tears slide from the corners of her eyes. A coincidence. How is that possible? Makoto. I watched the wedding footage. It's clear as day. George sat there the whole time. There's no way he went to get the ring. Makoto pressed his lips together. I was surprised too. I didn't expect Willow to investigate and gather evidence. But what does she mean by making a decision freely for once? Before we got married, when I proposed, I never mentioned the system's existence. So I always thought she was with me because she had fallen in love with me too. But now she says those choices were decisions she was forced to make. Love is voluntary. Not loving is what's forced. I was confused. System. Can you check Willow's affection level? The system quickly replied to me. In principle, I'm not allowed to tell the host. In reality, ahem. With a full score of 100, you raised Willow's affection to 99. I chuckled. That can't be right. Look at this. Does this seem like 99 affection points to you? Is this another bug? The system was silent for a long time before responding. 
This is why real people need to experience the plot. Human emotions are complex. No matter how advanced the system, it can't handle them. I let out a breath, but soon, I understood Willow's emotions. She was such a proud person, yet she fell in love with someone trapped by a system who had no choice but to be with her. On one hand, she wanted to follow her heart and stay with the person she loved. On the other hand, her pride told her that this kind of helpless, selfless love wasn't something she wanted. Willow wanted to love me but resisted loving me at the same time. So conflicted, so torn. Chapter 12. It was late at night. Makoto insisted several times that they were already married and that he wanted to stay the night, but Willow still had the driver take him home. After sitting downstairs for a while, Willow went upstairs to Anna's room. Three days ago, she had been in this room arguing with George. Now, George was dead. She walked to the bed but didn't see Anna. She called for the nanny and found out that Anna had refused to sleep in this room anymore. Anna believes that because she said bad things about Mr. George in this room, that's why he left her. The nanny whispered. Anna went to sleep in Mr. George's room. Willow then went to George's room. She had never paid much attention to George's room. Now it was night, and the lights were off, though it was dim. She felt she could see everything clearly. The water glass on the bedside table, the drawer that wasn't fully closed, the watch left on the windowsill. Everything was still there. How could George be so cruel as to leave this world? How could he bear to do it? Willow wanted to be angry, to smash everything, to vent her inner panic and confusion, but in the end, she just walked to the bed, looked at the sleeping Anna, and gave her a gentle kiss on the cheek, then she tucked her in, she didn't deserve this, she brought this on herself, unable to get past her own heart, Willow didn't want to admit it, but she had to, she loved George, she was the one who was truly afraid, afraid that once George was free from the control of the system, he would leave her, so she left first, she wanted to see how George would react, but she never expected that George really didn't care, he agreed to the divorce without hesitation. In a fit of anger, she announced her remarriage. George actually showed up at her wedding. She was so furious. Then, she held Makoto's hand and let him embrace her. Finally, she kissed Makoto. She even recognized Makoto as her husband. She swore she would love him for the rest of her life. Willow had known all along that George was watching her. He was watching her closely, and she proudly put on her performance. Until George's face turned pale and his eyes lost focus. At that moment, Willow knew she had made a mistake. A terrible mistake but her pride wouldn't let her back down first. She knew George could have ruined the wedding if he had wanted to, but there was no need. Yet she simply couldn't stay on that stage any longer. So she came down. Originally, she had wanted to force George to say what was on his mind, to take her away from the wedding and tell her how much he loved her. But once again, she was wrong. She had pushed George the wrong way, and now George was dead because of her. One test, one hurt after another. In the end, it led to an irreversible conclusion. Willow deeply regretted it. Regret that was driving her mad. There was no one to hear her confession, and no one to forgive her. Willow stood by the large window in George's room, looking outside. From this angle, she could see the front gate, the garden, and the fish pond. George had specifically placed a lounge chair by the window. Willow lay down on it. It was comfortable, indeed, but she couldn't find any joy in it. The view was mediocre, nothing particularly beautiful to look at, and the chair wasn't facing the garden or the pond. It was facing the front gate. What's so special about the gate? Willow thought as she rocked the chair. What could the gate possibly show? It was where George could see Anna and Willow coming home first. Chapter 13. It was late at night. I watched as Anna insisted on sleeping in my bed, and I watched Willow pacing around my room, eventually lying down in the chair I often used, slowly falling asleep. I found it odd. They never came to my room before. Now that I'm dead, they come. Even the system didn't understand this behavior. After analyzing it for a while, it made a crackling noise like it was malfunctioning. All right, take a break. Stop analyzing. I sighed. Is the exit passage ready? Almost. The system replied. Once you leave, there's no coming back. I gave a soft hum. Will this world be destroyed? The system started analyzing again. The plot has collapsed, so the world must be destroyed. However, the system will first investigate and submit a bug report for an upgrade request. So, the world will continue to exist briefly. I floated to Willow's side quietly observing her profile. After eight years, I realized I never truly understood her. I had failed completely. What exactly was the 99% of her love? I still didn't know. With a sigh, I floated over to Anna. She was sleeping restlessly. Perhaps she was having a nightmare. Her brow furrowed. Her lips tightly pressed together. I couldn't touch her. I couldn't smooth her forehead. I leaned close to Anna's ear and whispered softly. Anna is just a child. You must be scared too. Daddy doesn't blame you. You're still daddy's little girl. 
The system went quiet. I floated around the room, watching Willow, watching Anna, drifting in thought. A few hours later, the system suddenly returned, saying the passage was ready. I took one last look at this familiar space. Let's go. Chapter 14. The Real World. Three years later, I rarely think about the plot world anymore. My daily life consists of going to work, playing with my son, and joking with my wife, just like most ordinary families. We live an ordinary life, simple yet happy. Since I gave the system, which frequently bugged out, a good rating, it occasionally rewards me with points. The points can be exchanged for luck in the real world. For example, winning the lottery, getting a promotion, a raise, or maintaining good health. It's a small perk. Chapter 15. One afternoon, the system suddenly came online. George, the system's investigation is complete. The plot world will soon collapse. I had just woken up from a nap. I hummed an acknowledgement and then hesitated, asking, how are they doing? The system paused. In principle, I'm not allowed to tell the host. In reality, ahem. Willow refuses to see Makoto anymore and spends her days working and spending time with Anna, and visiting your grave, burning offerings. I almost choked on my own saliva. The system continued. Anna was heartbroken for a long time and couldn't get over it. It took her a year to accept your death and start living normally again, like Willow. Anna doesn't want to see Makoto anymore. She's just too scared to visit your grave. She still feels like she's the one who killed you. Too afraid to face you. I sighed. As for Makoto, the system's tone was flat. He harassed Willow countless times. Either showing up at her workplace or banging on her door late at night. The last time, he got drunk and ambushed Willow on her way home in the middle of the night. After that, Willow called the police. And he ended up with a record and lost his job. Now, he drifts through life aimlessly. I remained silent. After a long pause, the system said, Willow had a lot she wanted to say to you, so she wrote it in letters and burned them at your grave. Do you want to read them? They're full of things about the two of you and her feelings for you. I didn't think twice and refused immediately. The system didn't understand. Aren't you curious why she treated you that way? Why she conspired with Makoto to deceive the system and deceive you? Aren't you curious what that 99% love of hers really looked like? I kept shaking my head. You. The system's mechanical voice was filled with confusion. Human emotions are so strange. This system thought Willow didn't love you, but it turns out she did. This system thought you'd feel unsatisfied, that you'd want a clear answer, but you don't. Strange. Very strange. I shrugged. What's so strange about it? The system asked. Why don't you want that answer? I gathered my thoughts. For systems like yours, the primary task is to figure out definitions, to judge yes or no, but humans are not rational animals. They're slaves to their emotions. I don't know what Willow was thinking, or how she was loving her George, but during those years I spent as her George, I genuinely felt pain and coldness. So George got his answer. It wasn't love, at least. It wasn't the kind of love George needed, and since it wasn't what he needed, he could leave. There's no need to verify something unnecessary. Isn't that simple? The system made a faint buzzing sound as it processed. A few seconds later, it said, Love is love, not loving is not loving. This system doesn't understand. I burst out laughing. First of all, love is joy. Secondly, if I had verified it and found out that Willow did indeed love George, but George was still in agony and pain. Finally, system, let me ask you, do you think a love that causes so much suffering fits your definition of love? The system crashed again. Chapter 16. I refused the system's offer to show me those letters Willow had burned for me multiple times. It was very eager to study my reaction. I refused again. The system finally gave up but it still thought my refusal was worth studying. As compensation, it continued giving me more points. It allowed me to live a comfortable and abundant life, so it could keep studying. Chapter 17. A year later, the system's upgrade report finally got approved. After the complete upgrade, the system figured something out. Willow's George was already dead. The George in the real world was still alive. The heavy burdens from the plot world shouldn't be forced onto the real George. The system felt guilty. It gave George a huge amount of points. So much that George worried he might live to be 200 years old. Maybe he'd even be studied as a freak. Chapter 18. Many years later, the system was busy handling other hosts, rarely making an appearance. George was quite content with this peaceful life. In the end, life is long, and worth loving.